How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams from the Hard Gainer Academy. Over here we make gains in fitness and choose stocks to get your portfolio in shape. We also got to throw out the disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. So when you do invest, just know that you're doing it at your own risk. It is now the evening time. You know how we do it on a weekday. Today is Wednesday. So you know what that means. We're going to be doing a joke of the day. All right. So which part of the hospital has the least amount of privacy? The ICU. <laughs> Ah, there we go. I know, it's pretty corny. But anyways, we're going to be talking about AMC and their big time recovery today. Today was a green day for AMC. It went up almost 15% on the day. Some serious, serious gains. So what I'm going to be talking about are some of the things that really was a catalyst for this to happen. And also wanted to send a thank you out to everyone who's been holding and also making sure that you're picking up stocks on those dips, all right? So I wanna send a shout out to you guys. So now, let's talk about what's been happening on Monday and Tuesday, so pretty much the beginning of the week. We saw a lot of low volume, we saw a lot of market manipulation, we saw a lot of short ladder attacks from hedge funds and institutions. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna talk about what was going on earlier in the week as far as Monday and Tuesday, and then we're gonna talk about, hey, some predictions, some events that have occurred, and so forth like that. So a lot of people have asked me, so what is a short ladder attack? So I'm gonna do that right now, I took a notice on my phone. So a short ladder attack. A short ladder attack has multiple moving parts. The process starts when a firm or a fund takes on a sizable short position in a stock. From there, they will do what they can do to lower the stock's value. Since they are using a short sell to bet against a stock, instead of investing in a stock in the hopes that the value increases, they make money when the stock value shrinks. In some instances, a fund might put a company into bankruptcy. If bankruptcy does happen, hedge funds celebrate because they never have to transfer their counterfeit shares, which are used for shorting the stock into real shares. Also, capital gains taxes become a moot point. Companies use other hedge funds and brokers to pull the stock's value down by pulling out of their positions. So I find it's a very, very dirty, dirty tactic. And all it does is benefit the hedge funds and the institutions like you just heard. And that's what's been happening on Monday and Tuesday. Because I know for a fact that there were a lot of people who were just dumping and selling their shares. They're like, hey, you know what? I'm not holding this. And you know what? Because what they're seeing is like, oh, it's red. It's not doing too good. Oh, it's over. And I could see this because the lowest that price of the stock got to was into the $6 range. Like it literally hit $6. And then I know at that point, by the way it bounced, it got bought back up very, very quickly, right? So one thing the things that we need to look at and see as a victory today, the low was at $7.89 with the high being $9.77. So that shows number one, People are holding their positions, right? Scooping up those cheap shares when they become available. So we've been very, very bullish. There's also been more volume, right? So there's a lot more trading. And I'm going to be talking about that just now. And then on the next point, in the sense of like, you know what? I noticed in regards to what the price is, we're really trying to find a floor, right? And I'm really seeing where the floor is, the way we bounced off six and then we bounced off 789 and then we hit the top of 977, which we tested it on two different occasions. So I'm very, very bullish in regards to what it's going to be looking like tomorrow. So, so what are some factors that we need to consider that have happened and it may have helped get this rally continually going? All right. So number one, so Mark Cuban, if many of you don't know who Mark Cuban is, uh, he's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. But anyways, he was on Reddit and he did an AMA, so I asked me anything. And when he was asked a question in regards to what was going on, he said it straight up. He's like, I don't know, I don't have any shares, I'm not involved, but if you do have shares, then you should hold. That was big, because he obviously has a huge influence. So a lot of people, 
that, hey, you know what, look up to Mark and, you know, they appreciate the type of person he is. And he's also the type of person that's not afraid to speak his mind. That speaks volumes. The second thing we need to look at, Robin Hood decided to increase the amount of shares. So they had those restrictions going in the beginning of the week and then they said, well, you know what, you could purchase up to 1,250 shares of AMC. So that automatically changes the playing field because for the first two days, it was the hedge funds and the institution that had all of the control while they were doing their short ladder attacks, right? Now, the next point that we need to look at, a lot of people were switching their accounts around. So if people said, okay, you know, Monday I'm leaving Robinhood, it's probably going to take about two to three days before you could start trading in that new account, right? So that's going to take some time. So that's going to have an effect on the overall volume or, your, or on your ability to actually trade and be able to get a hold of the stock itself. And then on top of that is seeing how the momentum and the trend has been going. So here, look at it like this. Someone is saying, well, you know, I want to buy some shares of AMC, but you know what? It was low and then it was trading flat, but it was here at one point. But then there's some momentum starts. You start, you start seeing those candles or you start seeing that price go up. More people are like, okay, this is my time to get in. Let's be honest here. If there was no momentum whatsoever, I know for a fact it would have been a different kind of day. But when people start seeing, whoa, we have that potential to pop things are looking good, they're going to get into. This is basic psychology here. But what I'm trying to say is if you're holding shares, good on you, right? And if you have a high average cost, like I said, this stock got to $20. So I know many people who are at the $13 range, $14 range, holding shares and so forth. Many people have been averaging down, right? I'm not going to tell you to average down because you know, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice but it's one of the ways that you could use to kind of bring down your overall costs. And then when the stock rides up, then you could be like, hey, you know what? I'm green, I'm a part of initiative and I'm feeling good and there's no emotions attached. Another thing is, and also this is what Robin Hood says, and I can kind of understand it and I mentioned it in the previous video, is margin. So there have been different changes in regards to margin. So what margin is, is lending, right? If you don't have the certain amount of money inside your account, right, the brokerage will give you that money so you can make up for it to do the trade. So a lot of people are starting to realize that, you know what, trading on margin is not a great idea, especially if you don't have discretionary income for it. So I always say when you are investing, whatever money that you're using, you can't be afraid to lo lose it. You shouldn't have any emotional attachment to it. And this is actually one of the reasons why in the beginning of the week, we saw a lot of sell-offs on top of the manipulation. Because a lot of people were like, whoa, I'm losing all this money. I need to get my money out. I literally got like a direct message on Instagram. And then a gentleman was telling me like, yo, man, like I put like my, my, my money in there, but I need those for bills. And I'm like, like. And I was just like, man, I feel bad. And you know, he wasn't telling me like, hey, well, I need some money or he wasn't asking me for anything. Like he was just expressing how he was feeling and how he's down about it, right? Because he sold early. So I was just like, you know, man, like this is part of the reasons why you shouldn't be doing investing and using money that you know you're going to need. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to paying your bills, you can't tell the bill collector like, hey, I lost my money in the stock market. They don't care. They want you to be able to pay your bills. So for anyone who's thinking about investing in AMC and getting some skin in the game and so forth, please, please understand your situation and be prepared to take the necessary risk. If you lose the money, again, I just don't want you to see you in an unfortunate place, all right? So another thing that I wanted to touch on as well, which is amazing in regards to what's going on with AMC, there have been some recent investments. So like some big, big investment firms have been putting in money saying, hey, we're going to buy up some more shares. And this is part of the reasons why, you know what? I see a lot of potential for AMC going forward. I know some may say like, what do you mean? How much potential are you seeing? So let's think about it like this. How about when COVID clears up and things start going back to normal again?
people are going to want to go out. And when people go out, a lot of people go to the movie theaters, right? So I really do think at the time that we're in, aside from the short squeeze that's going to be coming, because I'm like, again, I'm looking forward to it. I'm so excited for it. We also got to understand that, you know what? It does, this company, AMC, does have some value, right? It does have some value to it, especially when things go back to normal. So right now, I think on top of the short squeeze, we're really trying to figure out what's the floor, what's going to be the price going ahead, getting a good idea, and so forth. And these are some things I think we need to take in consideration, especially if you're going to be deciding to hold it for the long term as well, all right? Hope you guys found this video helpful and I'll be talking to you guys tomorrow evening. If you enjoyed this video, I highly suggest you subscribe to this channel. We do joke of the days five days a week. If you liked it in the beginning, you'll continue to get those for the next Thursday, Friday. Those days of the week. I'll be talking to you guys soon. Peace out. So I almost forgot. I gotta let you guys know what is my price prediction for tomorrow. So you know what? Like I said, we've hit the $9.77 sense support area and kept getting pushed back down. So what I'm looking for tomorrow is for us to claim that 10 area. Cause if we can get past that 9.77 area, we can get into the 10 area and then we could start saying hello back to the 11 area. All right. So that's my price prediction. Had to get that in. This is the blooper clip. I'm going to be adding that to the video as well. All right, talk to you guys soon. Peace out.